This one looks like to have just been rescued by the US Coast Guard. This is like uncontrollable shivering right now. Beautiful Traverse City. On the shore of East Bay in northwestern Michigan, it's a serene place to visit, but I'm going to be experiencing it in a very different way. Time is crucial. We got flight chops in the water and we don't want them to get hypothermic here, so. In the previous episode, we covered our first day of training where Steve-O and I were put through a Coast Guard rescue swimmer survivor syllabus. And unfortunately, Steve-O washed out of the pool segment. I did my goal, stick to, I went uh, four feet. So that meant I had to pass or there'd be no mission tomorrow. It's official, I am out of shape. As one of us had to successfully complete the training. It's actually kind of like a comfy uh, cottage chair. Yeah. To be allowed to play the role of the duck. Congratulations, Steve Chops. You passed your uh, rescue swimmer survival qualification today. It was an honor to be involved in an actual training exercise. Looks like he's going with the backwards ball that's, technique. I give that about an 8 out of 10. The Coast Guard duck training prepared me for three different types of hoist rescues. A basket recovery, a double lift recovery, and a military aviator double pickup. We came over and we did a free fall deployment of our rescue swimmer, John, down to you. Deploy rescue swimmer. What we tried to do there is keep the survivor, so in this case Steve, outside the rotor wash. That prevents the rotor wash from uh, possibly drowning him, putting him under the water if he's been out there for an extended period of time where he's hypothermic. You can see him there swimming over to the survivors. There's the call to the basket. All right, uh, where's the brief? All right, brief, we're going to do a basket deployment to the survivor and rescue swimmer. Any questions? No, sir. All right, this will be from 35 feet in. Right. We sent the basket down to you. It's the uh, preferred method for us when we're picking up a survivor is to put them in the basket. It's just safer for them. First check mark two complete, ready out for deployment of the rescue basket to the survivor and swimmer. So like, how like, I have target site. None of this would be possible without the flight mech running the hoist. The flight mechanic goes on hot mic whenever he's about ready to start the hoist. It gets a little loud because, you know, the downwash of the rotors are pushing right down into his microphone, but it's important for him to be able to use his hands and talk at the same time. It's one of the most rewarding jobs I've ever had. I'd spent the previous afternoon training with John to learn my part in this exercise. Basket's going down. Hold position. Grab your hold. Once I see that basket come out the door, basket being attached to the plane, then I'm gonna start swimming you back towards the helicopter. Basket's going down. Basket just blow the aircraft. You'll know it's getting close when the rotor wash is hitting hard. You know you're you're about to get in this. And once this thing gets in the water, I'm gonna have you get inside. The most dangerous thing at this point is gonna be the cable management. The cable can come down really quick and dip around your arm or your leg. Stay close. Sometimes the uh, rescue swimmer will hang on to the basket for the first uh, few feet it's out of the water. That kind of does help the swinging. And he gave me a big spin. Was that just for fun? Yeah, he was just messing with you there, you know. Barbara's at the door. Moving in. There's flight chops in the back. The survivor is out of the basket. Wow, great job. Flight chops survives to see another day. Just a heads up, we're gonna just uh Deploy the sling down for a pickup of John. Yeah, we don't want to leave the uh, rescue swimmer behind. Always trying to bring the rescue swimmer home. But in all seriousness, sometimes swimmers do need to be left behind to make room for survivors. And of course, in case of ditching, they need to be trained to expect anything. Every year, air crews have to go through two days of drills. One being how to get out of the helicopter, and that's what Steve did in the pool and the second day being uh, how to survive once you're out of the helicopters, which is what we did at wet drills. Practical exercises and survival, building fires, shelter. We did the survival swim out to the raft, had to pull the raft over from being capsized, and then uh, we had injuries we had to tend to, just like in a real life helicopter ditching scenario. My biggest takeaway as a GA pilot experiencing all of this is that these guys just never stop training. 
So we're just going to use the sling for the uh, rescue swimmer, John, correct? Yeah, basically the reason why we put the sling on there just to pick up our rescue swimmer is when we put the hook down, the sling gives the hook a little bit of buoyancy. Helps John see it a little bit better coming down to him. Four and right, 30. Oh, oh. Sling is in the water. Rescue swimmer has the sling. Forward, John. Forward. So that was the easy one complete, but with no time to celebrate, John handed me the hook again. So we're going to set up here, we're going to put uh, bite shots back down in the water. And I was on my way back down to join Brock in the water. We put you down in the water and then did a direct deployment of John to you. You know, if a person's really struggling to stay above the water or they're in fast moving water or something, we need to get down there and do a physical grip pickup, basically where the rescue swimmer goes down and just bear hugs the individual and we hoist them up to safety. And that's basically keeping John on the hook and putting him directly on top of you. Swimmer's at the survivor. Swimmer's staying to the survivor. And oh, it's back off, give him some room, easy back and left. The second one was what we call a, a double lift, a hypothermic patient, someone we're trying to stabilize. That involves John coming out with both the sling and the strap. And you can see he uh, puts one right here above the chest, the other one right there at the knees, and it kind of lifts Steve up uh, in a horizontal fashion. It takes a little bit longer to get them rigged up, but it's a safe revolution if you're really worried about their uh, well-being after being in the cold water for a while. It was amazing to get to see this crew work together so well. It was a perfect example of crew resource management. I've done uh, tons of various types of missions, rescuing people in the water, in a raft, on a boat that's about to sink, or on a, uh, on a cruise ship. Uh, for real, I've done it once in the four years that I've been here. Uh, career, uh, I've only hoisted four people from the water. And that's why they train all the time. We were doing this on a calm day, but these guys regularly do it at night during storms. Uh, we've got 22 pilots uh, that need men's and training. We're out there doing that regardless of you know you guys were here or not. But uh, with having you guys here and having the coverage of it, maybe we can make a little bit of a difference. That benefits not only our air crews, but everybody out there who's gonna watch this video. We do this pretty often, three, four times a week. Individually, rescue swimmers get a chance to get in there and do this. Uh, almost every week. We're not connected to the intercom system, so John needs to yell to remind me what we're doing next. It's worth noting that the adrenaline was keeping me from feeling the cold at this point, but I can't believe this is like a regular day for these guys. So he did great. He did awesome. Uh, all of his hand signals were crisp. Uh, usually when we train a duck in their first deployment, they get in the water and they're, you know, they're, just, they're just so excited. They unclip and they don't give us the Hey, I'm okay signal, so the air crew's sitting in there like, is he all right? Did he hurt himself? 
Steve came right out of the water, gave us the okay signal, and from there, you know, the crew kind of was put at ease that, hey, this is going to go great. Yeah, the water's pretty chilly. I think right now it's about 60 degrees, right. but uh, it's, it's pretty warm for what these guys normally work with. The water's still warm. The water was probably warmer than the air temp, so it, it felt like a like a jacuzzi in there. It was, it was really nice. Knowing like how late in the year it is, I've been thinking about how cold it's going to be and how miserable I'll be. It's definitely not too cold when you've got the wetsuit on. But wetsuits only work in the water. And being hoisted up and down through the rotor wash was quickly draining my body heat. Six, going down. Six. Four and right, 40. Six, good right here. Right. Hold position. Chuck is in the water. Wait for disconnect. Right here. Easy right. for Chuck is disconnected. Chuck's okay. Uh, we're going to do a free fall of the rescue swimmer to the survivor. Deploy swimmer. Right here. Swim away. Swimmer's in the water. Okay. Hey, Sean, but be careful that he doesn't land on the victim. Yeah, that's very true. That's why we keep him outside the rotor wash. For those of you that don't know what a prop wash feels like, it is like, I guess, like being caught on the edge of a tornado. It's just wind and, and water hitting you hard. And I had to turn my head to sort of get a breath and then, and then turn around again and sort of do what I was doing. All right, we'll get ready to set the sling down to him, Dan. That's what he's going to call for, so we're ready to check part two. What I noticed about that last one, when John was swimming toward me, he disappeared. But I had my mask and I could see he went underwater and turned. It was so cool. He looked up at me and I, I guess I knew from you guys describing what he was doing, he was sneaking up behind me because that's the trick they use for someone that might be panicking, right? Yeah. It was such a cool way he did it. He rolled over, he looked up at me, the bubbles came up and then he flipped around and he grabbed me from behind. I just, you know, I played along and just didn't do anything, but it was so cool how fast he like flipped me over. It was like clockwork, man. Steve did good. He played the uh, perfect survivor for me. He made it interesting and the training was fun and uh, hopefully he got some good footage of seeing what we do best. Easy for it, right? of good CRM. CRM is absolutely crucial for what we do out here over the water. It's crucial to the safety and safe execution of all these hoisting evolutions we do. One of the cool things with the Coast Guard is you could take any rescue swimmer from any Coast Guard air station anywhere in the U.S., a Coast Guard helicopter from Miami, a pilot from Kodiak, a flight mechanic from L.A., and we can say, okay, Everyone meet up in Detroit, and you can literally get a pre-brief done in within an hour and go and get a, a SAR case with people that don't even know each other. And that is based off of our procedures across all the units. They're all the same, and our equipment is the same. Pretty cool. So getting in and disconnected from the hook for the last time was kind of bittersweet. This had been a long time planning this trip, and it was totally intense and amazing. Uh, and then the adrenaline started wearing off, and I started realizing just how cold I was for the ride back home. One final flyby, guys, on the way out. Holy okay. shit, how cold! Hey, I'm not as cold as I thought I'd be, to be honest. But once I got on board, that's where it hit me, like, how cold I was. I think a lot of it was adrenaline was just starting to wear off and now I can feel almost uncontrollable shivering kicking in. Steve, uh, he did really well. Uh, he definitely looked really cold at the end there. Alright, here we go. Going in guys for landing. During the ride back, I tried to imagine what it must be like to be a victim thinking you're lost out there somewhere and then to have saviors literally come from the sky and pluck you out of the water. It's just awesome what these guys do. What Steve has failed to realize is he is now uh, enlisted in the Coast Guard. He's actually not going back to Canada. Uh, we've trained him, so he owes us something. I just got rescued by the U.S. Coast Guard. It was pretty awesome. And I'm cold. It's the coldest day of the year so far, they said. It's hard to even describe. This is like, you can feel the core temperature drop thing happening. It's different than being cold on a cold winter day. This is like uncontrollable shivering right now. This is the kind of thing I do for you guys. 
The time we spent with the Coast Guard was totally inspiring. If you think you've got what it takes to be part of this amazing organization, there's recruitment information in the description below. And I want to thank the supporters on Patreon and the sponsors for helping make productions like this possible. This was definitely the biggest undertaking we've ever done for Flight Chops, and it was an honor and privilege to be able to do it and share it. We've got lots more of this crazy type of stuff, as well as regular relatable training from instrument flying to helicopter. I'm going to finally get that going. Uh, so keep an eye on the channel, and thanks a lot for supporting it. And as always, keep your Flight Chops sharp. How do we make fun of the pilots? Yeah. Well, in general, you know, they, they, they wear flight suits that are a little too tight for for themselves. Rescue swimmers maybe have a little bit of reputation for uh, too much hair gel. Sometimes that the nose is up in the air a little bit, you know. <laughs> Working out, beach volleyball, uh, mirrors, a lot of mirrors. No, we, we love our pilots. They're the ones jumping out of the helicopter, yeah. so they're not right in the head to begin with, so. <laughs>